Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good weekend and you're ready for the week. So if you have any questions, concerns, things are going well, things are going poorly, uh, please uh, let us know. And uh, we are happy to talk to uh, talk about it on these calls. Everybody can benefit from that. And I was just going to tell you, I did talk to one of, uh, one of our, our good producers here last week, and he just had an event and had everybody except for two people make appointments. So, I mean, these events are going really, really uh, well for people. So uh, that's good news. So let's go ahead and get started today. And again, uh, just type in your questions, concerns, and Missy will let me know as we g uh, go on here if you've uh, got perfect. questions or concerns. Okay. I'll get my question box up here. Okay. So male, female. So when uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we look at uh, men look at things a little bit different than females and why that's important. So uh, in a female dictionary, nothing, forget about it, means you better figure it out <laughs> what you did wrong. For a man, when you say no, nothing, forget about it, it's like, Jesus, quit talking about it. So for, for women, when it says, are you tired, that means please don't go to sleep. I love talking to you. And when a man says, are you tired, he generally is curious as to whether or not you are sleepy. When a, a female says that she's okay, it means hold me tight. I need a shoulder to cry on. When a man says I'm okay, it's like there's seriously not a dang thing wrong with me. And when a f female says I'm cold, it means get a blanket and cuddle with me. When a male says I'm cold, it means I'm pretty cold. I should probably get a blanket or something. Uh, when a female says leave me alone, she means please don't go. And when a male says leave me alone, he says get the F out of my face. And when a, a female says I love you, it means tell me you, you do too or you do more. And when a male says uh, I love you, it means I love you, just that. Don't expect any more response. So so uh, we can we all agree that women and men look at the world differently. We do, don't we? So BlackRock actually uh, did a study here recently, and they found women are more conservative, which shouldn't really uh, 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 be, uh, be a earth-shattering to any of us. But I think we uh, need to not just know it, but utilize that in our meetings. So they found that 50% of women are not willing to take any risk. 50% are not willing to take any risk with money. Just 21% said they are willing to invest in stocks. Because that means 80% of women would just assume not be in stocks. And only 41% said they feel knowledgeable about investing. And here's the conclusion that came up, and this is a quote. Women have a profoundly sober financial perspective, apparently more influenced than men by the realities, by the realities of today's market volatility and ongoing and uncertain uh, econ uh, and the economic uncertainties. So what is that saying, guys? And this is BlackRock is actually uh, all all uh, age groups. So basically, 20 to 80. So what is this saying, guys? And this was done by a BlackRock. It's actually a, an investment firm. So they'd be very interested in women being interested in, in investing. So why why are they saying women are profoundly have a profoundly sober financial perspective, apparently more influenced than men by the realities of today's market volatility and ongoing capital? Economic conditions. And guys, there are study after study after study that has shown that that's right, Dale, that women are smarter. They actually look at what's happening around them and, and, and incorporate that into their thought patterns. But men tend to have a Superman mentality that nothing bad will happen to them. And when study after study after study has shown who makes more money, women, men or women, in investing, who makes more money, men or women, in investing? Study after study, study has shown this. Why? Or I'll tell, we'll talk about why here in a second. Who makes more money, men or women? Bruce says women. Yep, that's right. Women do. Now, the only characteristic they could find on what is the characteristic they found that why women make more money than men when investing? Because they, they, they found out what had nothing to do with intellect, IQ, knowledge. What did they find it that women had done more than Yes, exactly, Mike. Women stay with their plan. Women stay with their plan. And then we've got Gene saying women are struggling dealing with reality. Well, that's true, too. Uh, they don't take stupid risks. I'd agree with that, too. Uh, but basically what they found is that women stick to their plan. They don't change and move and trade. They trade almost 40% less than men. And they've also done studies that have nothing to do with men or women. And I was, it's actually I'm going to talk about it in a pointer here in the next month or so. Uh, they found st studies that, what do you think, uh, uh, when they looked at, uh, I think it was E-Trade or Ameritrade or one of them, 
looked at all the trades that their investors had made. And we'll have, I don't have it on, on the information on me, but uh, we'll be covering it next month or so. Um, either E-Trade or Meritrade looked at all the trades their investors made, and what do you think they found out about the, when people sold a stock to buy a new stock, what happened in the next 12 months? So when people stole, this has nothing to do with men or women, but when somebody, when people sold a stock and then bought a new stock, how do you think those two stocks performed over the next 12 months, the sold stock versus the new stock they bought? Which one performed better? Yes, you all get it. Yes, the, the stock that they sold invariably does better than the stock that they bought. The stock that they sold invariably does better than the stock that they bought, which goes right back to if women don't trade a lot, they'd be more likely to make more money because of that one finding right there. But the main thing I want to talk about is neither, not who's a better investor, but the fact that, that um, if I can go back here, the fact that women are more conservative. Fifty percent of men are not willing. To, women are not willing to take any risk of money. Twenty-one percent want to be invested with stocks, and yet everybody that we come across generally has money in stocks if they're a married couple. So who's the person that wants to be in stocks in that married couple? The men do. The guy does. So how do we? Do you, do you understand? How do we use that? knowledge in our system. Let's see if somebody can get this. How do we use that knowledge in our system? The women are more conservative than guys. The guys want to be in stocks, but women don't want to be in stocks. How do we use that knowledge in our system? We use it in a lot of different places. Yeah, in the 21 point pr uh, process, Bruce, absolutely. Where in the, what, what part of the 21, points, uh, 21 point process? What part of the 21 process? Yes, no. What part of the 21 point tr process, guys? Guys, why do we spend 40 minutes? See, you're all talking about investments, investments, investments. No! Why do we talk for 40 minutes on non-financial items, guys? Why do we spend 40 minutes on non-financial items? To show how much we care, Bruce, exactly right. It's about who are we talking to? We're talking to the women at that first 40 minutes. We're bringing them on board. We're getting them on our side. And guess who wears the pants in the family? The women do. Now, here's the question, though. If women don't want to be in stocks and they wear the pants in the family, then why don't they stop uh, the, the couple from being in stocks? Women wear the pants in the family about things they what? Anything that they care about, their way or the highway. It just when it comes to investments, that's what they say. Whatever. If you want to invest in stocks, invest in stocks. If you want to remember, they don't care. They throw up their hands. They do not care. But when we start talking about the non-financial things that get women involved and get them on our side, then when we get to, to implementation and we're saying we need to at least have half this money and guaranteed, guess who's going to be all over that? The woman. So I understand. Oh, uh, that we need to have somebody in equities, but that woman is going to be all over on our side for the portion that wants to be, that should be in guaranteed. Does that make sense to everybody? So, any questions on that? So, I mean, uh, the 21 point checklist is really involves women because they wear the pants in the family and it talks to them in the language they're worried about, which is security and family. And the first 40 minutes is talk is about getting uh, her on our side. Now, I've talked to a lot of beginners in the system. And they say, well, you know, the, the, the client just is saying, you know, let's get to the point, let's get to the point, let's get to the point. And that's what beginners in our system do. And why do they say that, guys? Because what is the guy saying, during the, what is the guy in the couple saying in, in the first 40 minutes? And what is that guy in the first 40 minutes that the couple want to do? He wants to get the investments, right. He wants to get to the investments. And unfortunately, guess what that beginning advisor in our system wants to do? The same thing. He wants to get the investment. So he uses that as an excuse to say, Mike, this 20-point checklist thing, it works great as long as we don't have to spend 40 minutes talking about the non-financial thing. Well, if you don't spend 40 minutes talking about the non-financial, guess what? You're not using the system. I made a million dollars a year by, sell by doing things I don't get paid to do. It's that non-financial things that are going to make you all the money.
because it's number one shows that you care and number two makes you different from everybody else out there so don't skimp on that first 40 minutes does that make sense to everybody super so then I'm gonna go on to my next point here if I can get to, there we go research magazine March 2014 they found that margin debt on the New York Stock Exchange rose for the last six consecutive months. It, it hit a record of $44.93 billion. So we've now hit a record in margin debt. So for those of you who don't know what margin debt is, it's when you borrow money to buy stocks. So if we've hit a record of people borrowing money to buy stock, what does that tell us? It tells us that after five years of gains, what did everybody forget? After five years of gains, what did everybody forget? Oh, I've lost track of here. The last downturn, exactly, Bill. Including, guess how many advisors I talked to have forgotten that? <laughs> it's crazy how the human mind works. But remember, guys, we've talked about this. 1929 to 1965, that's a long time between those two crashes. 65 to 87, that's kind of a long time. 87 to 2000, that's not very long. 2000 to 2007, that's not very long at all. And we're now hit record margin debt. That's crazy what people are doing. It's crazy what people are doing. So never be, and this is a quote right out of the uh, Think Advisor, a research magazine. Never before in history has a voracious borrowing binge by investors or speculators with margin debt ever had a happy ending. So we need to be in stocks. But we darn well better be in what? Sure, we need to be in stocks, but we better be in what? Because if I was going to be in one thing or another thing right now, guess where I would be? Protecting the upside or the downside? So let's see some answers on this, guys. Yep, safe stuff. Exactly, Bruce. Safe stuff. Exactly. We're getting a little, uh, yeah, exactly. We need to be protecting ourselves against the downside right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, protect the downside. Okay, so that's my two pointers. Now, to what I want to talk about today, uh, when it comes to our system, is municipal bonds. Okay, tax exempt municipal bonds. So if we can go to the script, and I'll show you where the script is here. I'm going to go to the website. Maybe <laughs> if I can find my pointer here. Sorry about that, guys. So we'll go to Five Q Group. So you know where this is. Oops, maybe. Okay, so if we go to uh, Disclosure Meeting, that's where you'll find this. And then we'll go down to the part that deals with bonds, which is interest rate volatility. And so there you're going to see, you see the bond scripts and uh, tape to listen to, and you see the municipal bond script and tape to listen to. Okay, does everybody see where that is? So now I'm going to go back to our... Uh, if I can find it here, there we go. So this this is the script I'm going to go over. So this is what we go over. It's going to go over is um, what we would go over if they have municipal bonds. But so here's how we begin the script. Before we even begin the script, we're going to have a conversation about uh, whether we should. They think we should give more money to the government. Do you think we should give more money to the government? What will every client you ask that say? No. So let me ask you a question, guys. Why am I setting it up? Why am I setting municipal bonds up with the question, should we give more money to the government? Why am I setting that? Why am I asking that question even before I bring up the municipal bonds? Why am I setting that up? Because what everybody everybody's going to say no, we should not give more money to the government. So what do you think my point's going to be here in about five minutes? Muni bonds go, yes, Mike, munis go to the government. Right, Kevin, munis are lending to the government. So if they're saying we shouldn't give any money more to the government and they sell us on that fact that they tell us giving money to the government is stupid and horrendous because the government does nothing but waste our money, what have they just told us, guys? They shouldn't be in muni bonds. 
But we're not going to ask them that after we talk about mini bonds. We're going to talk to them about that before they, we talk about mini bonds. Okay? Does that make sense? So you're setting up a landmine. You're setting, they're bearing, they're digging their own hole here about mini bonds. Because they're going to go on and on and on about not giving the government money because the money, government can't manage money. And blah, blah, blah. That's what people say when you ask them that. But if they believe that, they shouldn't be in muni bonds, should they? So the next part we're going to say, because, um, you know, our, do you think, then the next question we're going to ask them is, do you think the uh, politics are going to be less or more dysfunctional? What are they all going to say to that, guys? What are they all going to say to that question? They're all going to agree. Yes, I think government's going to get more dysfunctional. What's my point here? They're digging themselves even a deeper hole. Then why would we give money to something that's becoming more and more what? Dysfunctional. Do you see, you remember in the, in the outside the box presentation, we talked about the six likely losers and how people don't connect the dots when they're investing? So everybody thinks there's going to be a terrorist attack. Everybody thinks that the, our um, important computers are going to be hacked. Everybody thinks that China could be a problem. Everybody thinks that... They, they all think these things, but they don't connect those things to their investments. And it's the same thing with muni bonds. People don't think they should be giving government more money. They don't think they should be, they think the government is dysfunctional, and yet they lend money to the government. It's crazy. It's crazy, but you've got to help them. You've got to help them uh, uh, um, uh, connect the dots. So ask them the next question, which is, do you think government's going to go more and more into debt or less and less into debt? What are they going to say to that? They're going to say what? More into debt, exactly. So now they've just told themselves three reasons why <laughs> buying muni bonds is crazy. Number one, giving the government more money is crazy. Number two, the government's becoming more dysfunctional. Number three, the government keeps going further and further into debt. If your friend, guys, if your friend <laughs> was, was um, a, a spendthrift, if your friend was a spendthrift and Every time you gave that, and Andy's dysfunctional, Andy's going more and more to debt, would you lend them money? Of course you wouldn't. So we've asked him all three, these three questions before we go into the whole questions about um, muni bonds, okay? So then the next thing we're going to do is go into the bond script. So the bond script is uh, right here. So the reason we're going to talk about bond script, the bond script before we go into municipal bonds is because bonds in and of themselves have what? Risks. So what are the risks with bonds, guys? Interest rates go up, bonds go down. And right now we're in the lowest interest rate environment that we've been in 50, 60 years. So we go through that explanation first, and then we say, but it gets worse. So after they decide bonds are horrible, we say, oh, but it gets worse. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So you have to do both. You go in with the questions about the government. Then you go into the bond uh, uh, risks. And then you say, but it gets worse. Does that make sense, everybody? Any questions on that? OK. So here's the bond, uh, here's the bond script then. So we say, um, now here's the great thing about uh, you know, the, here's the thing about municipal bonds. They don't get a, as high an in interest as other bonds, but we're willing to buy them. Why are we willing to buy uh, municipal bonds even though they have lower interest than other bonds? Why, guys? Because they're tax-free. Yeah, everybody gets it right. Because they're tax-free. But here's the question, Mr. and Mrs. Client. They're tax-free for everybody except for one group of people. Who are municipal bonds not tax-free for, guys? Who, are, who has to pay taxes on tax-free bonds in our, in our population? Yep, Brahma's got it. See if anybody gets it, else gets it. Brahma, good job. So when you start drawing Social Security, then what happens? Yeah, everybody's getting it now. Yeah, so when you start drawing Social Security, you have to start paying taxes on this. So that's part of the script. So we can say, hey, muni bonds are great, but you know, they pay a little bit less interest, but we're willing to get a little bit less interest because they're what? Well, because they're tax-free. Yeah, so we're willing to accept that lower payment because they're tax-free. But here's the thing. The bonds themselves, I mean, uh, they're tax-free for everybody except for retirees. See, retirees, <laughs> they, don't, they don't get that same deal because it can cause their Social Security to be taxed. 
So that's, how many do you think retired folks know that? I never had a retiree that knew that. They were all like, are you kidding me? So you bring that up, okay? Then you say, and the other thing we need to think about is this. Have you ever been to a city council meeting? I mean, have you ever been to a city council meeting? Because those people in the city council, those are the people you're lending money to, right? Because municipal bonds means what? City, state, county, those are the people you're lending your money to. Because if you haven't been to a city council meeting, I, I dare you to go to a city council meeting. I, I, I dare you to go to a city council meeting. Who's sitting on that city council board? Who's sitting on that city council board? Because I tell you what, if you go to a city council meeting, I tell you what you're going to do. Well, you, uh, well, you know, when we're done with this, question, you tell me what you're going to do when you go, after you go to a city council meeting. See, those people at the city council, they're good, decent people. They're trying to do the best thing they can. Same thing with the people in, in the state house, the state senators, state representatives, and the county. They're trying to do the best they can do, but is that their full-time job, guys? Yeah, it's right, Bill. It's your neighbors. Looks just like your town. So they have full-time jobs. These are not their full-time jobs. How many of these people have been trained in economics and finance? How many of those people on that city council board or, or even at your state government have been trained, or even the, in the federal government, have been tra trained in, in economics and finance? How, very few. I'd say none. And what kind? Okay, so when they get when they win a city council seat, or when they win a county seat, or when they win a state seat, do they go to some sort of training that trains them on how to manage millions of dollars in assets? Do they go to any training like that, folks? No. Well, remember earlier when you told me if the government needed more money, why did you tell me that the government shouldn't have any more money? Because what do they do with our, the money that we give them? See, and here's why I say that. I went to a city council meeting one time because I had a zoning problem in my neighborhood, so I was there to talk about that. But I was, I was just, I was, I was just, oh, I could not believe it. And you tell me if you don't think this happens at your city council. So they, they went ahead. I'm watching the city council. It has nothing to do with what I was there for, but they had some other business there. And one of the business was they were going to buy a $380,000 snowplow. So a $380,000 snowplow. And so they, they all were, were ready to approve it, but a guy stands up and approached the mic and said, hey, did you know you could buy the same plow for $125,000? So they were just about to, 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 to throw the gavel down on a $380,000 snowplow when a guy stands up and said, you can get the same snowplow for $125,000. So guess what the city council said? Oh, oh, okay, well, I didn't know that, so uh, we'll put that, we'll table that, and we'll do some more research. Which tells you how much research did they do up front for it, folks? See, what happens when people start spending other people's money? There's a weird thing that happens when people start spending other people's money, and what happens? I mean, we said it earlier. Should we be giving more money to the government? No, because they spend it like it's water running through their hands. Why do they spend it like it's water running through their hands? Do you think that that's the way they run their household and their own finances? No, when it's not theirs, what happens? That money is spent like it's like it's there's no tomorrow and there's no thought, there's no there's no accountability and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, they're both what? Guilty of it. They both do it. What they spend it on depends on who, you know, what side of the aisle you're on, but they both spend do what with our money? Spend it like it's going out of style. So what happens when these entities do this? What happens when these entities do this? Spend money like this? When they're spending other people's money, I mean, they spend like so. So, isn't that a problem if we're lending money to people who have no uh, uh, concern for the value of that money and how much a car costs to earn? And we said earlier, should we be lending money to the government? We said no. Why? Because they keep spending it. They keep going further in debt. And they're dysfunctional. On and on and on. And yet, we lend money to municipal bonds. Guess what we're doing? That very thing. But we think, well, but at least it's safe, isn't it? Well, for all the reasons you told me earlier about lending money to the government, we have to question whether it's safe or not. 
and it's really not safe. Look what happened in New York in, in New York City in the 1970s, bankrupt. Orange County, LA in 94, bankrupt. And by the way, Orange County, LA, the week before they went bankrupt, in fact, the day before they went bankrupt, what was their bond rating, folks? What do you think their bond rating was? Triple A. One day later, bankrupt. San Diego in 2004. And there's been lots more recent in Alabama, Pennsylvania, Detroit. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Did you know that about every, 10 municipals, uh, municipalities go bankrupt every single year? Over 10 a year. And if you Google municipal bond problems, you come up with 1,930,000 ,000 hits on that. But, you know, they used to insure bonds, so at least we'd be okay. In fact, it used to be that 50% of bonds were insured. It used to be that 50% of bonds were insured. So, you know, even if you're investing in something bad, if it's insured, at least you have that protection, right? But you know what? Only 10% of bonds are insured now. Why? Why are only 10% of bonds insured? Just five years ago, 50% were insured. Now only 10% were insured. Because there used to be seven municipal bond insurance companies. Do you want to take a guess on how many there are today? There used to be seven municipal bond insurance companies. Now I'll talk to you guys as advisors. I'm, so I'm out of role play here. How many of these seven municipal bond insurance agencies are still around today, guys? Any guesses? No guesses. Well, I'll tell you then. There ain't seven, I'll tell you that much. Oh, you know what? There may be guesses. I'm not seeing them. My uh, thing's here. One, two, two. Casey's right. Two. There's two left. And here's the problem with those two. <laughs> they just had a, a big argument with Moody's. So Moody's, the bond rating agency, they basically, uh, uh, dis they, um, they tightened its standards. So Moody's tightened the standards on what would be rated a triple A, double A, 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 uh, triple B, B, double B, and B. It's all the way down. They tightened their standards. So guess what the two insurance companies did? They quit paying their, their premiums to Moody's. So what does that tell you about those insurance companies? They have the same problems. That down to two, we're going to be down to zero in a real soon, in a, in a heartbeat. So why, um, so why do municipalities go bankrupt then? There's lots of different reasons municipalities go bankrupt and run into problems. One is they run up their fixed costs too high. Okay, it could be what, whatever you know, whatever running the government, the the city or county government is just too expensive for them. Uh, skyrocketing debt on a facility gone wrong. So there, many times it's been either a rec facility or a water facility or a garbage facility. Uh, that they, um, they have uh, the debt is too high and they can't pay that debt. Uh, lawsuits, fraud. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's been lots of cities that have gone under because the mayor or the uh, uh, or some some person that controls the money inside the government of the county has stolen that money. Mistakes, and the biggest problem is looming ahead, though. So you know what we could say? Well, they could fix all these problems, right? Well, first of all, you don't know their problem. These are problems until what? It's too late. It's too late. But there's one problem they're not going to be, be able to get out from under. So I'm going to pull out a role play here again, guys. What's the problem that all the municipalities are going to have a problem with going forward? And pensions, Jerry. You're exactly right. Pensions, pensions, pensions. That was Detroit's big problem, right? We're at the very beginning of the baby boomers. Now, when you ask your clients this question, folks, uh, can I ask you a question? How good are the municipal uh, uh, pensions, you know, the city pension, state pensions? How good are those pensions? What will all your clients tell you? What will all your clients tell you? They're unbelievable. The, the reason people work, want to work for government is why? Because the pensions are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. Well, here's the problem with those unbelievable pensions. We're about to pay the price for them. City after city, county after county, state after state, 
unfortunately have done what with their pensions? Did they fund them or did they unfund them? The vast majority of, uh, of municipal pensions are unfunded. And we're at the very beginning of the baby boomers retiring. Which means what, guys? This is the amount of baby boomers daily, reaching retirement age daily. 10,000. I mean, basically, and then it goes up to adult. This is crazy. And it's not just Detroit that's under the, under the gun for these pensions. It's every single city. See, this, I thought this was a fantastic uh, 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 comic. City budget, pensions, 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 everything else. So if you're in a municipal bond, guess what you've got a problem with? Every municipality is going to have a problem with the pensions. You've got that on your back. How's our nest egg doing? Well, if it's invested in municipal bonds, guess what? Sitting on a great hand grenade. So basically how you do this, uh, so uh, how you're going to do this script, and again, it's all on the site as I showed you. You're going to talk about the, I should have had another one in here. So let's talk about the uh, problems with the U.S. giving money to the government. Giving the money to the government, do you want to give more to the government or not? Do you want to, uh, do you think the government's going more into debt or not? Do you think the government's becoming more dysfunctional or not? And then after you've done, had that conversation about giving money to the government, then you talk about the bond problems with the bond script. And then you talk about, hey, uh, not only are, are, um, do we have these bond problems, but the, the municipal bonds aren't tax-free to seniors, so you're taking a lower interest rate to pay. And again, a lot of this has to do, does, do you think the fact that they're um, paying taxes on these municipal bonds, do you think it has anything to do with they could get a better deal interest rate-wise? What does it really have to do with? As J Jeff is very good at saying this. The 21-point checklist is about what? Having the same conversation over and over and over to point out what? What's the point about uh, uh, municipal bonds not being tax-free to seniors? Come on, guys. Why do we have the same? What conversation do we have? The same conversation over and over and over on the 21-point checklist. What's that conversation we have? Lack of disclosure, Kevin. Lack of disclosure. It's not the fact that they're paying taxes on, on, on the municipal bonds, because you, you could figure out whether that makes sense or not with a quick calculation. The problem is their guy did not cover that with them. Their guy did not cover the fact that their municipal bonds might be causing them to pay taxes on their Social Security. Now, remember in the bond script, how we end the bond script is, is why do you think, remember the three questions. Was this shown to you before? If you had, what would you have done? And why do you think this was not told to you? Guys, what's the, what's the only security that salespeople are not required to report their commission on? What's the only security that, that um, salespeople are not required to put, re report their uh, commission on? Frank got it. Bonds. Bonds, guys. Bonds. And they are, have been a lot. If you walk down Wall Street, the guy wearing the $700 shoes is not the stock trader. He's the bond trader. And I sold bonds for a bank. I made way more money selling bonds than I made selling annuities. I made way more money selling bonds than I made selling stocks. I made way more money selling bonds than any other type of security because you could charge whatever you wanted and the client didn't know what that commission was. That's crazy. So why do you think that somebody wouldn't tell, uh, an advisor wouldn't tell, a, uh, or why do you think a client would, or an advisor would not tell a client that their municipal bonds are not tax-free? Number one is many, many advisors don't even know it. And the ones that do don't care because they can make tons of money selling bonds. And every bond, municipal bonds, government bonds, corporate bonds, any type of bond. So the next part of the, the, the script is in all the problems that go along with giving money to our government. So you go through that whole uh, uh, scenario with the, with the uh, city council. And guys, have any of you ever been to a city council meeting? What, are those the people you would give your money to, to manage your money? Would you, for those of you that have been to city council meeting, would you ever, Joe, Bill saying no. When you watch C-SPAN, are those the people you would ever give your money to? I don't care if it's the federal government or the state government. Would you ever say, hey, here's my money, manage it for me? Would you ever give that to any federal senator, or U.S. senator, 
U.S. representative, state senator, state representative, county, council. I would never, those are the last people in the world I'd ever give my money to manage. Does that make sense? Then we talk about the demise of muni bond insurance. Then we talk about the looming municipal pension uh, implosion. Guys, we ain't seen the end of this, and nor will we. I wouldn't be putting, I would not be buying any long-term municipal bonds. I wouldn't be buying any municipal bond that had longer than a three-year maturity. And you know what? Three-year maturity municipal bonds ain't paying anything. So this, this is how you would, and all of this is on, on the website, okay? All this is on the website for you to, uh, to uh, learn, both as a script and with the uh, actual uh, tapes of me doing it, okay? So I think that is all I want to cover. Let's make sure. Yep, that's all I have to cover. So any, uh, does, so if you run into people with municipal bonds, this is how you're going to handle the municipal bonds. You talk about uh, the U.S. government, then you talk about bonds, then you talk about municipal bonds. Okay. Cool. Any questions on this, guys? That can't be handled by you listening to the script. So any, uh, any. Uh, um, Awesome. Good. Well, then we will cut you loose. So if there's no questions, we'll go ahead and uh, cut you loose here. And um, hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you all on Friday. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.